Well, good morning. Welcome, welcome to worship this morning. And uh, good to see you all. This is the first weekend of June already, so lots of activities going on this month of June. Uh, you can read about most of them in the Messenger. Some ones I want to lift up is that there is a uh, youth planning meeting after worship today, that next week there will be a Father's Day car wash, so bring your dirty cars and we'll raise some money for the youth trip and um, uh, have a fun day with that. There also, uh, there will not be a music and worship committee meeting today after worship. We'll meet the first week of July. So I think all the committee people pretty much know that by now, but just in case. And other announcements I think you can read about, except I do want to pull out about the goal of stewardship ministry, that uh, they are lifting up your values and the areas of ministry that are in alignment with those values that we usually say at the end of worship. So um, this month, it's guided by the gospel. We nurture youth. Uh, imagine excited youth growing, learning, committed filled with the possibilities of living life guided by the gospel next weekend after worship uh, on Sunday, next Sunday after worship. There'll be uh, a meet and greet, get some uh, information sharing, idea sharing on uh, upcoming youth events, ideas, opportunities, invitations um, next Sunday, and I highly encourage that. Another thing with a little bit younger youth, we've got a little message here. Good morning. I don't know if you've noticed our decorations. Jean Barty and Kathy Merle and I spent a lot of the day yesterday getting ready for Vacation Bible School next week. I'll be out front at the table after worship. For any of you that need to still register your children, we still have volunteer positions. If you want to volunteer, I really need you to do that with me today because we absolutely have to have a background check. Um, the liability is on me if I let somebody do something and something happens and we don't have a background check and, and I'm just going to be hard-nosed about it and say no. Um, youth that volunteer have to go through the safe child that we have on our website um, but anyway we welcome you to come anytime during vacation bible school we're going to have our closing every evening at 7 30 and you'll get to see what the kids did during the day and the video that we have every evening we also are going to have an ice cream social on thursday and you're and i'll be back there and you can sign up for that so i know how many to expect but anyway, we're gearing up, and we're very excited, and we can't wait to have our youth come, and our children come, and our adults come, and spend this time of fellowship together. It starts on the 14th, 14th, 17th, sorry, 17th, which is Father's Day. Seems kind of appropriate. Um, and we're going through Thursday, so we have another week. Good morning. I just wanted to say very quickly that the Messiah House, the Safe to Sleep House, is going to start taking donations this week, uh, Saturday especially. Uh, there's numbers in the messenger if you want to call and need to have things picked up. Otherwise, call, make arrangements with us. I will be there most of the week this week, and we'll be there on Saturday if you want to drop things off on Saturday. So thank you. Sorry, one more. The um, 2018 ELCA Youth Gathering is coming up, and part of what the kids are doing is um, gathering books for the youth. In de they're going to Houston, so the school teachers have given lists of books, specific books that they would like the youth to bring to gather from their churches. So we have put a board back there that has the books that they want us to bring. They're like Pete the Cat, okay, so they're very simple, easy books. They shouldn't be very expensive. Um, I kind of made it like a tear-off. Well, the boys made it like a tear-off. 
tear off the book and then put it in the bin below. And we need those books by the 24th because the kids leave on the 27th. Is that right, Paul? The 27th of this month. So nothing like last minute, but we're going to see if we can at least get some books to take with us. Thank you. Uh, one more. Um, so I've got this big cross on, and I got this as a gift from the Synod this weekend. Um, it was my five-year ordination anniversary, so I got a certificate and all this stuff. So thank you. I thought I'd wear it. So with that, let us worship. Please rise and sing. Living together in trust and hope, we proclaim our faith. We believe in God, God, creator of the universe, in things seen and yet to be seen. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's begotten Son, who came to earth to live among us. He was born of the Virgin Mary and knew no sin, was tempted by Satan and did not yield was crucified, died, and rose to life again. He waits in heaven for all of us. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives us the vitality to do the will of the Father through this life of the Son. In this, we will have life everlasting. Amen.
Every day of our lives, we sin against you with our actions and our inability, as well as our hurtful words of painful silence. We continually drop the ball. Sin has consumed our lives, and there are a lot of things we have not done, but should be doing to glorify your name. We have held back from loving you fully. We have focused on loving ourselves, and with that we have left. We have not reached out to our neighbor. Our son sacrificed and died for us. Show us your mercy, forgive our sins, refresh our hearts, and guide us through your days. We love you and want to be like you. We are thankful for your grace so that our sins do not permanently separate us from you. Amen. And gracious God, we are thankful for your grace. And we do, we lift up our confession to you and we receive now the assurance and the everlasting gift of the entire forgiveness of all our sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel according to Mark, the third chapter. 
Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him from people, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind, and the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the power ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called to them to him and spoke to them in perils, parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man then indeed the house can be plundered truly I tell you God people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter but whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin for they had said he has an unclean spirit then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace be with you all. Please take this time to share a sign of peace with one another. May my words be in harmony with the universe, contribute to its justice, enhance its beauty, and help bring peace to all the world. Amen. Jesus went home. One of those great, very short sentences that we find sometimes in the Gospels. Jesus went home. It, appear, it appeals to my poet's heart and my poet's ear. We think of home. We think of perhaps a fire, a dog sitting by it, perhaps a glass of wine or a cup of hot tea. More importantly, perhaps, we think of relationships, mother, father, siblings, and we're filled with melancholia and nostalgia. This isn't the place we're talking about today in our gospel reading. No, this is closer to what we find in that great American novel, You Can't Go Home Again, by Thomas Wolfe. Some have said it is the great American novel. I'll leave that to English professors to sort out. But you can't go home again. Completely different view of going home. A commentator on 
the novel, wrote this. In the flux of time and life, old ties and associations cannot remain the same, unchanged. Once they have been outgrown or cast off, old ways must be set aside as part of a past which cannot easily be recaptured again. And that is where Jesus is at. You see, Jesus is a teacher of transformation. And he himself has transformed. And now he's gone home. After having cast off old ways. After having moved on. We hear also in the reading about the crowd, that the crowd was so huge they came to see him that they could not even eat. Interesting turn of phrase again. I remember as a kid when we talked about great crowds, we say they were packed like sardines. I never really knew what that meant. We just said it. Packed like sardines. I didn't realize it until I opened up my first can of sardines many years later, and they really pack them in there. And that's what it was like. So packed, they could not even maneuver to eat. And remember, Jesus is about eating. Jesus is about communing with others. This was a big deal to him, and now they couldn't even eat. There were so many people. We also hear that he was beside himself. The Greek word is existima. It means to be outside of oneself. And usually interpreters of this passage say Jesus was out of his mind. He was crazy. Well, but there's another wonderful Greek. There's plenty of other things that we can talk about here. And one of those is that he was astonishing people. He was astonishing people. He was filling them with wonder. And so I can imagine that he was very excited about what he was doing, very excited about his message, was very animated. Maybe it looks like he was out of his mind with enthusiasm. And enthusiasm, another great Greek word meaning to be filled with God. He was filled with God. They thought he was out of his mind. Then there's talk of Beelzebub and the great parables that Jesus teaches there. Beelzebub is obviously a negative deity, probably from Baal, the great deity of, of the Near East, not of the Israelites, but of the rest of the Near East. And his name means Lord of the Flies. That's disgusting. Some of you might remember that book too, The Lord of the Flies, in the movie, where the uh, young boy's school crashes on a deserted island with no parental help, and they have to exist on their own. They have to govern themselves. And one of the things they do is kill a wild pig, and they put that pig's head on a stick. And the flies surround that head, and that's Beelzebub, the Lord of the Flies. Jesus talks of Satan. Here, remember, Satan is just the accuser. Great parables, yes. But I maintain that's not what this that's not what this reading is about. This reading is about discipleship. We didn't hear that. We didn't hear that because it's in the seven verses that precedes Jesus went home. And he went up to the mountain and called to, to he went up to the mountain and called to them those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve to be with him, 
and to be sent out to preach and have the authority to cast out demons. Simon, whom he surnamed Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, come on, and John, the brother of James, whom he surnamed Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanian and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These are the twelve that he called. Twelve in the Near East, where numerology was very important, numbers. Twelve is the number of God's governance. If you recall, God took Jacob and renamed him Israel and gave Israel twelve sons who became the twelve tribes of Israel. And by Jesus' time, most of these tribes were dispersed. And so Jesus has called another twelve to be his disciples. There are also 12 primary constellations that these people would have seen in their night sky to show God's creation, God's governance over creation. And these 12 lived with Jesus, adopting his way of life, gaining spiritual growth and power in that community and most especially, his message of transformation. And that transformation is in the word repent. That's what he asked us to do, repent. And I always make a big deal of this because I think it's a big deal. It's not, repent, you sinners. It's, transform your life. The Greek word is metanoia. Turn around. Face God. Change your paradigm. Become part of this kingdom. That's what repent means. I love this picture. There were a lot of them that, as we looked, that showed, repent. Repent. This one, I think, comes closer to what Jesus had in mind. Turn yourself around. Face God. Transform. And notice in verses 13 through 19, he gave them the power, the authority over demons. The disciples. Most of us, I would venture to say, all of us are bad disciples. We're good people. We're good Christians. We try to do the right thing. But we don't understand the concept of discipleship, of what Jesus called these 12 men to do. And that was to give themselves over completely to him and to his idea of transformation in the kingdom of God. That's tough to do. And I will be the first to say, I ain't no disciple. I'm a poor, poor disciple because I don't always give myself over to what Jesus would want me to do. Let me give you an example. Hopefully everybody will remember this example. The Karate Kid. It's coming back. They're going to make a third one, I believe, and the Karate Kid and his nemesis are in their 50s now, and they're going to go to it again. 
Okay, that's the latest. But this is the original, and it's a great example, a film that's a great example about discipleship. And if you've seen any of either of the first two, the Karate Kid, our hero, goes to Mr. Miyagi, and Mr. Miyagi says, I can teach you karate. Kid says, it's good. Teach me. And he goes to live with Mr. Miyagi, and Mr. Miyagi treats him like an indentured servant. He works around the house, he washes the car, doing all of these things, and he's saying, when do I learn karate? This is what I came to do. And the great scene that's important much later is Mr. Miyagi showing him how to clean the car. Wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. And this is what's needed, okay, much later. You see, the karate kid became a disciple of Mr. Miyagi. He gave himself over to what he wanted him to do. This wasn't his idea of learning karate. This was being hired help without the pay. That's discipleship, to give yourself over completely to what someone else has in mind for you. That's not all of the story either. The rest of this story of the Karate Kid is very important. Remember the bad guys, okay, at the dojo? And he was one evil character. <laughs> Win at all costs. Cheat. Do whatever you need to, but win. And we could talk about the ethical applications here, but I'm not. What's important is that the guys who were in that dojo were not disciples. They were students. They were students of this man. And that is us. We're students. We're students of Jesus. We faithfully went to Sunday school as kids. Perhaps we faithfully go now as adults. We study the scripture. Perhaps we read other books about the scripture. We study Jesus. But that doesn't make us disciples. Disciples is giving yourself over completely. So this isn't just another Pharisee Jesus story where Jesus once again outwits the Pharisees. It's far more. I want you to think about one other thing that's in the scripture. Remember the lawyer that came to Jesus and the lawyer says, what do I need to do to gain heaven? Jesus is that simple. Get rid of all your wealth, give it to the poor people, and you'll be fine. And do you remember what the lawyer said? Uh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> I'll get back to you. How many of you have said that to Jesus this week? I'll get back to you. I have. I will admit it. And I know that we all do. Because we're poor disciples. We think, okay, you know, you've got the parables about Beelzebub and Satan. and Okay, I'll, we're, we're good to go. But Jesus doesn't let us go. The last part of our reading today, they go to Jesus and they say to him, Hey, uh, your mom and brothers are outside. And he says, what mother and brother? He said, my brothers, my mother, my sister, everybody is here in front of me. Whoa. That's a tough one to be a disciple and follow Jesus. Say goodbye to your mother. Now Jesus is given to hyperbola. We know that in the scriptures. And he does things to shock us. Shock us into repentance. And I'm sure this is one of those spots. 
But I think there's also something there. And when you follow it, you can't go home again. So, I challenge you this week in the days ahead to work, to move from being students of Jesus to being disciples. It's difficult. It's tough. And I wish I could give you five steps to do it. But it is our Lord's challenge to his transformation. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings.
Gracious God, may we be filled with your spirit, your Holy Spirit, as we lift up prayers for the world that you love and for the church that you have put in place. God, you call your church to be one. You teach us that a house divided against itself cannot stand. We pray that we may overcome the separations that we feel in this body of Christ. That we recognize the value and the diversity of our family, of brothers and sisters in Jesus. Lord God, with you there is forgiveness and hope. You love your whole creation. Help us that our lives may be so ordered that we give creation a voice of hope. Empower us to be healers of your world. God, we, you still walk among us and we still hide ourselves. We hide from you in fear. We withdraw from strangers and the unknown and those who are unlike ourselves. The very people you call us to love. So we pray prayers that replace our fear with trust, remove enmity between nations, and grant us peace. God, your compassion, it continually reaches out into the lives of people. Visit with loving kindness those experiencing afflictions of any kind. We especially pray for Rosemary, for Heidi, for Elda, for Paul. We pray, lift up prayers of sympathy for friends and family of Abigail, and especially for her parents, BJ and Amy, as they go through this very hard time. Renew all of us and prepare us for glory so that we do not lose heart. Jesus, more than those who watch for the morning, our souls wait and watch for you. In the coming months of summer, help us to be refreshed, to play while we watch and wait for you at every turn. Lord God, we, you raised Jesus from the dead and promised to raise us with him, that we may be in his presence in that raising up. We remember those who have died, and we thank you for the steadfast love and power of redemption. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, God, we lift up these prayers in trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. 
This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so remembering Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. And now, Lord, hear our prayer as we pray the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared. All are welcome to receive this meal. Today we will commune by intinction, standing intinction. We'll have two stations. Yes, two stations. So there will be communion servers on this side and kind of central for your rows over here on this side. And you will receive the bread and then don't eat it. Take and dip it in either the red liquid, which is wine, or the white liquid, which is grape juice, and there are gluten-free elements available. They'll be on the stand nearest me. You can reach um, yourselves for the gluten-free uh, wafer, and I will say the words of uh, communion over them as you do that. So come let us eat.
invite you to stand and receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now receive the blessing. May God bless you in your coming week. May you live each day with the decision to be a disciple. And each night in the prayer of receiving the forgiveness of your sins and starting anew. Thank you, God, for this great gift of repentance and renewal. Bless you now. In Jesus' name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.